Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet tea bag wallet. If you are an avid tea drinker and you like to bring your specialty tea bags wherever you go, then you will love this. All the information and measurements for this tutorial will be over at the blog post which will be linked below as well as the information icon in the top right hand corner of this video. So the first thing you're going to do is cut out some cotton fabric. I'm using this beautiful fabric. I think it is Riley Blake. I'm using medium weight Pellon fusible interfacing. I will only interface the outer fabric. I'm using just a regular broadcloth for the lining. So the first thing I'm going to do is iron on my fusible interfacing onto the back of the outer fabric. This will help make your wallet a little bit more stiff as well as make it look nice and smooth and crisp. So this fusible interfacing has glue on the one side so you put the rough side onto the back of your fabric and then you um, press that with a hot dry iron. And then I'll start working on our closure. I'm going to be making a long rectangle closure and I'm just going to sew down the long side as well as one of the short sides. I did make this piece longer at first but I did end up cutting it down to about two or three inches later on in the video. So I'm just going to sew down the one side and then I will snip off the excess so that when I do flip it right sides out it's not too bulky and I get a nice rectangle. So it is a little bit tricky to flip this right sides out, so I did speed it up for you guys. But I just used a knitting needle and managed to do that. It didn't take too long. So now we're going to work on creating the slots for our tea bags. I used a piece of paper and I actually created a template and here are the measurements. These are the fold measurements. We're gonna fold our piece of paper like an accordion and that will create our tea bag slots. So if I'm going too fast for you, all that information, all the measurements will be over at the blog post. So definitely check that out if you need clarification. So with that template, I can just lay that down on my fabric and then I can just guide my fabric with the folds. And then I don't have to think about it. I don't have to measure out my folds on the fabric and I will always have that piece of paper. So if I want to make multiples of this, it will be so much easier and I don't have to think about it. So I'm just going to finish folding all of my fabric up. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you are done all your folding, that the piece measures the same size as that outer fabric. So it's great to use paper because you can just iron on top of it and you're not gonna wreck it. Okay, so now I have everything folded. So I'm just gonna do a little test run, put it onto my outer fabric just to make sure that it fits perfectly and it does. So now I'm just going to do some top stitching on the, um, the folds and then that'll just make it look a little bit neater and more professional and all that stuff. So I usually do a three stitch length about one eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. So now I'm going to take that, I'll put that with the right sides down onto our outer fabric. So right sides together. And then I will get my little tabby piece. Like I said before, it was a little long, so I cut it down. You can do about two to three inches, depending on how much you want, or how long you want it, I guess. So I'm just going to insert that onto the one side and make sure that the raw edges of that little tab is lined up with the raw edges of your fabric. And then we will clip it all into place. So from here, you're gonna start thinking about what you wanna do for a closure. I'm going to be using a plastic snaps, but you could use a Velcro. I'm only gonna sew down three sides. I'm gonna leave the top of it open and you'll see in a minute why but this will be so much easier to install to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. So I'm just gonna take it and flip it right sides out and then I will install my snaps. I can ensure that the snap that's on the tab will be going the right way because if you install it first, you might end up putting it in backwards. <laughs> and then we can 
perfectly guide where the snap will fall onto the actual wallet itself. So it's just easier to do it this way, I find. And because we left the one side wide open, if you wanted to do Velcro, then you have um, a lot of room to be able to put that under your sewing machine. So I'm just going to put the male end onto the tab, and then I'll put the female end onto the base of our wallet. Um, if you have never worked with snaps before, I will have a video posted at the blog post for you guys so you can check that out if you've never had them before or tried them out. They're very handy to have. I usually have just a bunch on hand, but you could use um, sewing snaps or of course the Velcro. So totally up to you what you guys want to use. I'm just gonna do a little test run and then I can figure out the placement of our next piece. And by doing it this way, we also hide the back of that snap on the inside of the wallet. So after that, we're just going to turn the whole thing inside out again. And then we can sew up that top portion, but we're gonna leave a three inch gap and then that will be used to turn it right sides out again. Before you turn it um, right sides out, you're going to just snip the corners, um, snip off any excess fabric. This will just help reduce the bulk on your edges and it will help when we go to do the top stitch later on. And then we'll just grab something um, long and pointy like a knitting needle and we can um, use that to poke out your corners. And because we snip those corners, these corners will be nice and sharp and it will look like a nice perfect square. So now we're just going to press it. Make sure if you did do any sort of plastic system such as these snaps, you don't iron over top of them because they will melt. <laughs> I've done that. <sighs> Anyways, and then we're just gonna fold in the raw edges of that opening. And then I will fold the wallet in half I'll just press the crease and then that will give me a guide um, to where I'm going to have a line, which is where I'm going to put a seam down the center just to make sure that our tea bags stay alone and don't come together in the center. Um, so I'm just going to use some chalk to mark that. And then we'll do a top stitch all the way around the whole wallet and then that line of stitching right down the center. This top stitching will also help to close up that hole that we use for turning. I like to use a three stitch length and do it about one eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. So after that, then you're pretty much done. How sweet is this? I absolutely love it. So if you do give this a try, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and share because we would love to see it. And of course, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be alerted of future tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.